Praise the Lord, everyone. And what an honor and a privilege it is to bring you a note of history, history that happened during the 1950s. And as the organizational historian of the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, of the apostolic faith, I'm delighted to present these treasured moments in the history of one of the greatest Pentecostal apostolic organizations in the world. It is a story about our founder, so to speak, uh, Bishop R.C. Lawson, who came to New York in 1919 and established a church, uh, refuge churches all over the country. And marching from 133rd Street, which was called uh, beloved refuge in earlier days, it became so crowded because of the broadcast and because of uh, the preaching of this great man of God, this Bible scholar, this world traveler, this eloquent speaker. And uh, Bishop Lawson is the founder and resounding leader who we uh, will always remember, a man who established churches in the West Indies, in Europe, in Africa, and throughout the length and the breadth of these United States of America. He was known as the cry loud, prayer, spare not preacher. <laughs> and he would preach the gospel from his heart. He would preach the gospel from the word. And uh, as I said before, he was known as the cry loud, spare not preacher whose radio publishing, teaching, and evangelistic work has resulted in thousands coming to Christ through his ministry. This is largely an audio presentation and it's taken from a portion of the Sunday morning worship services in 1953. Uh, the large converted Lowell's Theater uh, was packed and it had two balconies, and not only would the main floor be packed with people, but both balconies filled to capacity. And Refuge Temple was one of the largest attended churches in Harlem in New York during that time and until this day. This exciting piece of lit uh, history is led as we start this audio uh, by the choir of the senior choir of Refuge Temple at the time, a humble servant singing solo, Brother Gill. And he was the head of the senior choir. And he sang that song, That's Why I Love Him So. That's why I love him so. And all of us can think of, oh, a million reasons why we love God so much. And then the song is picked up as the audio moves forward by the late Bishop R.C. Lawson and his melodious voice leading the congregation as they went further into uh, this historic anointed period of worship and praise. The central subject of Bishop Lawson's sermon was that God's no can be just as sweet as his yes. And uh, he took it from the text was taken from Hebrews, the fifth chapter, eight verse, though he was son, yet he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Bishop Lawson talks about in this, how he came about uh, the current Greater Refuge Temple location. He had wanted a church up on Mars Park and he had laid hands on the building, went down to Howard University and talked with officials, but he was turned down and he was disappointed. Uh, but he came back and he was riding down 7th Avenue and all of a sudden he saw this abandoned Lowe's Theater and he got right to work on it. I'm going to let you or let him tell the story. We cannot forget how later God sent upon the death of Bishop Lawson in 1961, a man who was Bishop Lawson's chauffeur, his name was William Lee Bonner, Apostle William Lee Bonner, one of the greatest preachers uh, in the history, uh, our history, 
as well as world history. And he sent this man, he was pastoring uh, in Detroit at the time, but he had previously been Bishop Lawson's chauffeur. And uh, God gave him a vision to remodel uh, Refuge Temple so that today, uh, which we see this beautiful edifice, the Greater Refuge Temple. So come with us now as we visit these precious moments in Pentecostal apostolic history. God bless you. Where I love him so, and to the children he said, Come to me. That's why I love him so. Never will he for a moment forsake. That's why I love him so. That's why I And that's why I love him so. Where I may dwell by his wonderful grace, that's why I love him so.
attention this morning to a text found in the fifth chapter of the book of Hebrews. Fifth chapter of the book of Hebrews. Though he was a son, yet learned he obedient by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal life unto all them that obey him. Called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say that are, and are hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when, the, for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and have become such as need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that has used, used milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, uh, for he is a babe. But strong meat belong with to them that are of full age even those who by reason of the use have their senses exercised the sign both good and the evil. <clears throat> though he was a son, yet lying he obedience to the things that he suffered. These are the words spoken about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, our example and paragon. Uh, uh, he uh, is the way, he said himself, and the truth, and the light. And uh, he set the example and norm of all men, or all women too. Eventually he is the final avatar in the life of men and women. They shall be judged by him by his standard and stature. He is uh, our wisdom, made of God, our wisdom, righteousness, our sanctification, and our redemption. We must come his way in order that we might be justified by his grace, as the Lord through faith. So we might have uh, that blessedness and that assurance to the Lord that is spoken of concerning by whom we have the atonement or Paul speaks of the at one in the book of, the, of Romans. Now this Savior of ours gives us a, a, that sense of at one moment brings us in reconciliation with God. It says, therefore, then when we are enemies, we are reconciled to God by the death of his Son, how much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Not only so, but also joy in God through Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement, or at one month. And we have the Christ as our soul arbiter and our example, uh, and we are to follow him. For I said we should take up our cross and follow him daily. The example here in his life that was brought out by this wonderful book of Hebrews was though he was a son, Yet learned he obedience to the thing that he suffered. Notwithstanding the fact that he's a son, yet he learned obedience to the things that he suffered. It was in the days of his flesh uh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him out of death and was heard in that he feared. The our record says, saved him from death. Christ was not saved from death. And neither did he pray to be saved from death, but rather to be saved out of death. Not from death, for the Greek word ek uh, is uh, uh, noted and not apo. He went down into death, uh, but thanks be to God he was saved out of it by the resurrection from the dead. Uh, all based upon, of course, the, his uh, willingness to suffer for our redemption. 
And though it was very hard upon the physical side of him, though he learned obedience, he suffered uh, obedience by the things that he endured. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal life unto all them that obey him. Uh, we are told in Philippians, praise the Lord, the second chapter, uh, let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus, uh, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow uh, in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So we have here this adjustment of God from the psychological point of view in the person of Jesus Christ, who is the mystery revealed of the Godhead, for the wit God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. And again, the Bible speaks of him as uh, being the manifestation of God in the flesh, and that without controversy. Great is the mystery of God in us. God is manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirits, seen of angels, believed on by the world, and Gentile, and received up in the glory. Uh, God was manifested in the flesh. Christ is God manifested in the flesh as Son. And he went through all of this psychological and physical uh, trying and uh, excruciating uh, experience uh, from uh, the angle of the flesh uh, to the end that he might, as God know and taste, as it is recorded in the book of Hebrews, that we had not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but in all points was tempted like as we were, yet without sin. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that having been tested on all points as we are, he had compassion uh, feeling for us. He, he was compassionate because he had passed through it himself. For we have not a high priest, says the 50th verse of the fourth chapter, uh, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So one of the secrets of his suffering, and reason for him allowing it, was that he might know the, what we have to go through with by experiencing the like uh, passions and like uh, suffering. Uh, that we, when we come to him, uh, he would not only know it from the standpoint, as it were, of God, but he would know it from the standpoint of experience. You never amount to much as a leader unless you live what you experience. You can't do very much unless you experience what you live. The world affects it when, when you live what you experience. And when you live what you're talking about, you can be the people feel it, feel it, because it comes to them in, in the sense of a, a, a feeling that uh, you are a comrade with, as well. You understand because you have suffered. Like people who go to folks for help, they always try to go to those that are spiritual, those that are understanding, those who have gone through trouble. Amen. That know how to deal with them, know how to talk to them. People who haven't gone through trouble and suffering and temptation and even sin, they don't know how to talk to people as they ought to. They can't talk to the right point. And they can't talk uh, to the right uh, 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 end, to the end that the person might realize that though I'm wrong, yet you understand and you sympathize with me, amen, and you have a fellow feeling with me. So Jesus, in order that he might have a fellow feeling, amen, endured all of these things uh, in order that when they that failed God or come unto him, at any need he would be able to help them and understand their condition, not only from God's point of view, but from experience point of view, for he himself was tempted in all points like as we were, yet without sin. Praise his name forever. And he learned obedience of the thing that he suffered. Uh, we sometimes think we get too big or we too know too much or we're too influential or we're too, oh, I don't know what you say. We feel ourselves too high 
to obey. Uh, but the Lord, uh, being the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, set an example. If I, amen, if I, amen, humble myself, if I, amen, will do this, how much more? And then Paul said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Though he is in the form of God, thought not robbery to be equal to God, and I took him on the form of servant, and then found the fashion of the man, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the death, even on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him. If you want exaltation, you've got to learn how to sympathize and hit the bottom of others' experience as you might rise to the highest order, praise the Lord, of our calling. Amen. The scripture says, I beseech you, brother, by the mercies of God, present your body a living sacrifice. Praise the Lord. Now, if Christ our Savior, praise the Lord, has given his body a living a, a sacrifice unto death, how much more ought we to? Praise the Lord, give ourselves to the glory of his great name, for these things are examples unto us that we might follow in his footsteps. The Apostle Paul says, uh, this is uh, my calling to you, brethren, amen, that you shall be of like mind. Like Christ was dominating, you should be of like mind. And uh, uh, he learned obedience to the things which he suffered, not what he wanted, but what he suffered, but he did, didn't want, as it were, and yet wanted. He knew it was his duty, the call of duty, because the law of time makes us do things that we don't want to do naturally, but because we ought to do it. Because the Lord, we do it in the name of the Lord because we love him and we want to please him. Praise the Lord. Amen. And Christ went through a lot of things. So many people are not like that. Uh, if the thing is displeasurable to them, they don't want to do it. And they will rebel against it. And though he, was, he prayed against it, and he said, with strong crying and with tears, and that, uh, that, uh, that was able to save him from death, and heard him that he feared, yet, though he was a son, yet learned he obedience to the things that he suffered. God will hear your prayers, but he'll never always say yes to them. Sometimes God says no to your prayers. And that is just as as good as his yes. I found out in my experience that God's no is as sweet as his yes. I wanted to church in 123rd Street, uh, uh, 24 Second Street, and uh, uh, Mount Morris Park. And I went and put my hands on the bill. White people was in it at the time. They were going to move out. And I said, well, that's another good church, and I'd like to get it, Lord. And then I was able to lay a, claim a thing, believe on the Lord. Uh, and there's nothing impossible to them to believe uh, and uh, have faith. And so I prayed and went and laid my hands on it in Jesus' name. Right. And I claimed it. And uh, finally, I didn't get much headway. I went to Dr. Himes, who was a quite a character for the Presbyterian Church. And he wasn't there, so he was teaching in Washington, D.C. at Harden University. I got on the train, went to Harden University in Washington, D.C., and went into his classroom. And, then, and after he was over, his Lord, I. Uh, spoke to him about him using his influence. He said, you know, I need a church. You know how old crowd I am. I uh, oh, use your influence, Dr. Himes, to help me get this church to tell me whatever you advise the Presbyterian board that I usually follow. He said, I'm sorry, Bishop, but you won't be able to get that church. They have given that church over to Reverend Adair, a young minister who's still in school, and he hasn't got any members. But so my church has given him a skeleton official board uh, for him to start. He has no members in the Presbyterian church. Will that church to him? Well, I felt so burdened. I felt my heart bent down in the pit of my stomach. I was so disappointed. I didn't know what to do. And I was in a class of Dr. Carrington, who was teaching at Howard University at that time. And uh, so I listened to his class and finally was over and we'll go to chapel exercise. And when he got through preaching, God messes as chapel exercises usually are. Uh, he said, uh, well, we uh, not much spirit or something. He made some commonplace remark around the day. He said, but we'll sing number so and so and so. And the song, he opened the book, I'd never heard the song. and said, be still my soul. 
the Lord is on thy side. I wish anyone that knows that song, say, man, will give it for me if you got it. So that patiently the cross is which he put upon you. So be still, my soul, the wind and waves doth know his voice will rule them by the dark road. I was comforted by the song. It was a message. And I surrendered it when the Lord died. When I surrendered, the Lord said, when I say no to a thing, it's because I have something better. I said, thank you, Jesus. And I got up. I felt such a sweetness in my soul. I said, I found that God's no is just as sweet as his yes. And I found that God answers all prayers. Only the ones that he don't say yes to, you say he didn't answer. But he answered, he told you no. But you didn't want to accept that. <laughs> so I found out that God answers all prayer. Some he says no, and some he says yes. And he happened to say to me, no, you can't have this church. And then later on, praise the Lord, I come by here one, one day riding. The Lord said, don't you try to get that building there. It's closed up. I thought you might be able to buy it. Well, I got busy. We tried to find out who owned the property. Uh, the uh, RKO people own it. And uh, they were just keeping it closed up, paying the rent, uh, and uh, I mean paying the lease and paying the taxes, uh, just to keep anybody out of here that would open up another theater. So of course it wouldn't hurt Apollo and the, this other place up here that their boss uh, owned or operated, and so they just kept it closed up. So I, when I found out who they are, the man, the meanest looking man I ever saw in my life in New York City. Amen. But anyhow, I decided I was going to tackle him. He looked so mean and actually ugly. But you know, I took a lot of me and I got a smile on him. For some reason, he said, I might pitch it so you can get that place. Parson? I said, thank you, sir. And uh, so he told us who the owners were, who the man to represent the place was, Mr. Yeager. And uh, I left it to my broker to uh, uh, go out and negotiate. My broker was the man to do it. And a broker wrote letters me, telephone, he couldn't get nothing through. I was praying all the time, and the Lord said to me one day when I was praying, I remember to the Lord how the world had every good place and good corners and well lit up streets and Pentecost, a church folks had little by side streets and storefronts, and boy, I murmured and grumbled too. And the Lord said to me, get up off of your knees and put on your best suit and go down and see this Mr. Hager. So I went down to this place to see this Mr. Hagen, and I ran across an old maid, a Spencer. It looked like she was, had a sort of a grudge on her uh, against me because she hadn't gotten married. And particularly, she didn't care nothing about no colored man. Uh, I said, uh, what do you want? She said, I said, I want to see Mr. Hagen. I said, well, Mr. Hagen's busy and I haven't seen anyone. I said, but I, I would like to see him. I'm in you know, distress and, you know, I started talking to her, but, you know, because I heard a, a lawyer in the court said, I pray the court. I said, there's no man no money to pray the court. I said, who will a man praying to a man? And then I said, well, I don't know no scripture against praying to a man. I said, well, I'll stop at praying to a man too when the time comes. I'll pray to one too if it's necessary. So I started praying with this old lady, old Spencer. <laughs> but she was hard. She wouldn't hear my prayer. But he heard me pleading with her. He said, who is that Mr. So-and-so out of his inner office? And there's a kind of preacher here from I've been hired, I'm going to see about that place the Hunt and Paul said. I should talk to her low, she said, let him come in. I went on in, I'm so glad, I was tingling with excitement. He looked at me from head to foot. Now, I know clothes don't make a man, but clothes speak mighty, <laughs> mighty <they're> part. <laughs> and I know why the Lord told me to put on my best suit, I could understand men. That was my best, my B&O, my best and only. <laughs> So I, <laughs> I got up to the desk and said, what do you want? I told him about my plight and how the broker had tried to get in touch with him and how I hadn't heard an answer. He says, uh, well, your, your price was, too, your offer was too small. I said, I'll make it 5,000 more. He said, make it 10,000 more. I said, well, I'll make it 10,000 more. That's as far as I can go. He said, all right, I'll buy uh, uh, Princess Alice Croak of Sweden and see what she has to say about it. I said, well, when do you think you get an answer back? Oh, he said, in 48 hours. In 48 hours, I was Johnny on the spot at the door. Hat in hand, me too, boss. I will see to it. I'm going to pray to you, old man, today. I will see him keep on the good side with you. And he finally said to me, offer accepted. Woo, I hit the ceiling. My blood pressure and everything else. 
thank the Lord. Amen. And I got uh, the de job through uh, the purchase price down. I told uh, in Harlem, answered that news. How did you get that building? Who wanted that building? I said, that's our building. How did you get it? I said, the Lord moves in this tears with it. I told the minister's conference and, and uh, Brother Bond and uh, Brother Gone, I said, how I lost and got that building. I lost and got that building. I said, I got the keys. <laughs> I said, I got the keys. And I got in there, and of course, you know, these seats were the seats I had that been in there 14 years. God kept this place locked up for me 14 years until I grew up uh, membership uh, strong enough for the Lord to take this place over. The furnace down, so everything is intact. But I got up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the Lord. And so I got a hold of this place. And you know, I'm so happy that God didn't answer my prayer. Uh, that 123rd Street Church. I'm so happy if I'd have come by here and saw some other preacher in this place. I knew I could have gotten it and didn't do it. And that I was sitting over there on 123rd Street in my North Park. I'd been sick and qu I'd quit coming down saying that. And this is not to look at this place. Uh, look at this place. Amen. And so God's answer, no, is just as sweet as it is. Amen. I thank God today for the prayers he didn't answer for me. Those that he didn't say yes to. I thank him for the prayers, bless God, he said no to. You know, to do the thing, bless God, what he, what he wants you to do. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Now the scripture speaks of Christ being a son. Learn obedience to the things that he suffered. How much more should we learn obedience to the things that we suffer? If it's displeasing to us, we ought to do it because it's right. The Bible says in the 17th verse of the third chapter, 13th chapter of Hebrew, Obey them that have rule over you, for the watch for your soul is one that's given account. See that they do with joy and not with grief, for that is not good for you. That is not profitable for you. Amen. We should learn obedience to the things we suffer. Regardless whether you feel yourself important and highly educated or got a job or you're well fixed and whatnot, you should obey the laws of spiritual life in order that you might grow spiritually in God. As I was preaching the other Sunday, that the, th the first lesson that Adam lost or uh, failed to learn the garden of Eden through Eve was obedience to God. Touch not the tree. Amen. Uh, that, that particular tree. Well, all the rest of them may eat of it, but not that particular tree. The tree might have not meant anything particularly in itself, so far as the properties were concerned in the tree. But God's word said, don't touch that tree. Amen. Don't eat of it at all. Amen. And Eve doubted God by believing, amen, in uh, the devil's lie. He made her believe that God was holding her back from her rights, that God was not uh, taking advantage of her, uh, that God uh, was uh, robbing her of her privileges, that she, her eyes would be open and she'll be as God, she'll know both good and evil, she'll understand a whole lot that God is keeping her from. And anything the devil can get you to believe that someone is holding back your, you from your rights, or holding you on to do so because you are so and so and so and so, and make you believe that you are so big or that you ought to do a thing because you uh, know better, or you think you know better, or you're better, too good for it, it's wrong. And so we find that he, he said, it. all the days of Jesus Christ, he said, you believe I can do this? And yeah, go on. And anointed his eyes had and go wash and a man came seeing. Obedience is the thing and faith in God is the thing. He that believeth in his baptized shall be seen. There's obedience and there's faith. All down the line. That's what you got to learn.